There's a really important difference between assessing a young child uh, who has difficulty with speaking and particularly talking about their feelings and assessing an older child who's able to tell you fairly easily what's going on internally. We know with younger children, first of all, they're not as able to let us know what's going on inside with their feelings. And so we have to use our observational skills to understand that a little bit. And we have to use reports from parents and rely more heavily on what other people think is going on with the child. The other major challenge is some of the, th the patterns of behaviors that are considered diagnostic in an older child might be quite normative in a young child. One of the major things that we need to think about is what's normal activity in a preschooler? What's normal level of anxiety uh, in a preschooler? And making sure that we're careful not to uh, lump behaviors that are presenting in the clinic always as problematic. Similar patterns may reflect different diagnoses. Again, children have fewer ways of letting us know what's going on, so they may have disorganized behavior that reflects anxiety, that reflects ADHD, that reflects uh, difficulty with language. And we have to be careful to make sure we understand developmentally where the child is and the meaning of the behaviors. So those are some of the challenges um, that make diagnosis of young children different from older children. The last thing, though, is that these are moving targets. We know the brain is developing most rapidly in the first years of life. That means behavior, like every other domain, is developing incredibly rapidly. But the first point we see a child may be quite different if we see them three months later or six months later. And we need to be aware that those shifts are likely to happen. Um, and that's important in assessment because there may be a change when we see the child next. It's also important in treatment that we can't attribute developmental changes to treatment interventions. The important message is that careful assessment using multiple reporters, mother, father, grandmother, child care provider, uh, using multiple appointments so we see the child on a day before a nap, after a nap, hungry, not hungry, and using multiple modalities, meaning structured uh, approaches that we do every single time with every single patient, and informal interactions so we can assess what normal life looks like. All of these contribute to our ability to really understand clinically what's going on with a child.